Skadoosh, Joy Moss, Bad Boy Gaming. I have not done one of these kind of videos in a very long time, which is disappointing because for the last like four years, I was always doing these videos. We're going to do top 100 most expensive cards um, in the, the multiverse, in uh, the Commander, March of the Machines, in March of the Machines itself. All that. We're blending them all together, and these are the 100 most expensive cards. Now, do keep in mind really quick before I just jump into this. These cards, some of them are going to tank like three, four hundred percent. Like a card that's nine dollars and thirty six cents, you might see that tank all the way down to a buck fifty, two bucks, maybe less. Okay, that is a possibility. Right now, the prices are all jacked up because no cards exist and the market is made up of cards that are on the market and available for sale right now. So, the sellers who have a very, uh, they, they, if there's a very limited supply, they depict the prices. It's that simple, okay? So do keep that in mind. Prices are going to change. But right now, this is like an idea of what's the top dog and, you know, what you should be looking for, what you hope to pull. Let's go. Karuga, the a macro sage. I cannot spend all day reading the text. So we're not going to do that. But we're mostly going to focus on the art and... Uh, Maybe, uh, you know, where I see stuff going. It's like, for instance, here's um, the cavalry dude over here. Menace, lifelink, whenever a knight you control deals combat damage to a player. Put a plus one, plus one counter on that creature and create a blood token. Wow, they're really throwing that in here. Okay. I don't see that being a $9 card. If you do, congratulations. It's just not going to be. Um, and here's another one. Uh, $9.45. Flying boy. Whenever a scheme of thief deals combat damage to a player, create a token that's a captive target artifact that player controls. Let me tell you, there is a lot of power that has been distributed from Phyrexia All Will Be One and into March of the Machines. And I really like where Wizards is going with this. We're not just seeing jacked up power levels with you know the new master set, a new commander legend set. Oh, I mean, foot and mouth. The, the, the last commander of legends was not that great, but we're seeing power levels that we honestly haven't seen uh, in any standard set prior to Phyrexia. All will be one, and that's a fact, Jack. You can take that to the bank. So we're gonna scroll to the bottom here. I'm a TCG player if you ever want to pick up any cards or boxes. Use the affiliate link in the description. It's really cool. And if you want to be in the breaks, because we're going to be breaking these and battling and all types of stuff, check out the Patreon link in the description. All right, that all out of the way. And my TikTok. That's right. I know. It's 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 all one one word. Bad Boy Gaming JM for Joy Moss. I think you'll like it. All right. And I'm on Instagram and all this other stuff. It's crazy. All right. Yeah, a lot of these cards are just not going to be there. Um, like an uncut, for example, Tetsuko. Now, there are so many different variations and versions of cards, it's insanity. I can't even stick with this. We're just going to go over the cards and where they're at. And some of these cards don't even have an image yet. All right. But wow, the power level is very impressive. And uh, I do believe this is uh, the right direction. At uh, what's he taking? Um, Aurelia the War Leader, March of the Machines. Is that like the Legends multiverse thing? Probably. I'm just going to blow this one up really quick just to get an idea. Yeah, there's the. Okay. Makes sense. Because, yeah, we've seen that card before. Okay. So keep the ball rolling. I am pumped about dinosaurs, though. I like that there's dinos in this set. I think that's really cool. My voice is almost all the way back. We'll see what goes on with that. Sadar Jabari of Zafar. You can almost make a rap song about that. Got the eminence. What's that about? This is my first, by the way, this is my first look at any of these cards. So, I mean, get some popcorn. I'm going to get, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get comfy with learning this set. Okay. So, yeah, get some popcorn. Maybe a little beverage. Whenever you attack with one or more knights, if Sadar Jabari of Zafa is in the command zone, or on the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. I'm just trying to like gauge the power of these. Flying, first strike, four, three. Whenever three round games, can potentially play a return target, knight creature. All right, so knights are going to get a little boost. That's cool. All right, I dig it. Here we go. Zergo and uh, Jutai. Some of these cards are flips, you know. Um, not all of them, though. Oh, man. Kahira. 
right here, for example, this card is not going to be worth anywhere near ten dollars when it's all said and done, man. But then these different like foilings and variations, very well could uh, could lead to high dollar cards, man. Pricey, pricey cards. You never know. All right, Realm Breaker, the Invasion Tree. I'm pumped to see the Mythics at the very top and all that other stuff. Oh, that's a lot of text. See, we can't go over all this. But I wanted you guys to tell me, what are your thoughts on all this, on the power level being increased? And uh, all the different variants. There are tons and tons of variants, man. My, oh, my, are there tons of variants. And uh, my thoughts on it, I've been playing the game since Ice Age, you know? So, like, around Revised, uh, 96, 95, all that stuff, you know? I've been in the game for a very long time. Took a hiatus for, like, 15 years or 12 years, 13, 4, who knows? But the cards that are out now, they have no choice. Wizards has no choice. But to continue to power creep with new cards. There is no option. If 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 they go in reverse and like nerf the power level of cards, what do you think happens? Can anyone take a wild guess? What do you think is going to happen? No one's going to buy the product. <laughs> it's that simple. And uh no one's going to care. So I said this in about, I think, three videos now. But when, before the Phyrexia Albi one, and that really was the turning point. Like, that is the turning point. I'm telling you right now. Before Phyrexia Albi one, the power level of cards, we would only see maybe anywhere from three to, I'd say, at most ten. And that's being very generous that would impact other formats. Now we're seeing multiple. We're seeing like anywhere, like with Fractal LB1, we're seeing like 10 to 20 cards that are impacting other formats. That's, a, that, that's, that's like the big difference here. And uh, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think a lot of people realize that, you know? That's massive though. Shieldred, Whispering One, man. So I really like all the different treatments. The only thing is, it's going to be so difficult just to keep up with all the treatments. It, it's almost humbling if you purchase a draft box and open that up. So I, I, I used to say they're, you know, they're going to get rid of the draft box. Set boosters are going to replace it. I mean, that, that's still very likely because if you talk to local game stores, they will tell you. I mean, standard has basically died out in local game stores, and that that is bad. For, for uh, Hasbro, for Wizards of the Coast. They need to have players who want to play and purchase the latest set so they keep the money flowing in. If, if, if the power level doesn't get jacked up, people are going to stop playing. And, or they're, just, they're not, not going to they're not gonna stop playing, but they're, they're going to stop purchasing the new sets. Because what's the point, you know? And as um, good old Brian would say, you know, just buy singles. Someone's got to crack the boxes, Brian. I don't know if you're aware of that, but if, if everyone just buys singles and no one opens any packs, there is no supply. <laughs> so, I mean, I kind of think it's funny when he says that, but I understand. From his standpoint, what he's saying is don't spend, like a draft box, don't spend... $120, $110, bucks. Well, I don't know what the price is where you're at. Don't spend a, a, a whole big chunk of change and gamble that you're going to get the card you need. I completely understand that, you know. But someone's got to crack the pack still. Instead, just go out and buy the cards that you need for your deck. Foreign collects Voice of Hunger. Is that the reprint? Whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, that land doesn't have tap area. Wow. Oh. It's it's really cool. Whatever you tap on that for man, it will minimate. It's a big drop, man. Uncivil unrest. See, like a, a lot of these are just gonna tank. Non-token creatures you control have riot. If a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it would deal damage to a permanent player, it deals double that damage. Those cards uh, can usually be impactful. 
there's a lot rent does a lot of that already i mean i kind of feel at some point they're just gonna run out of ideas i don't know when that'll be maybe it'll be like 2060 the year 2060 is when when hasbro runs out of ideas and you'll see a two drop that is as powerful as this card right here as powerful as this Voren Klex, and it'll be a two drop. Like, that's eventually where we're headed with Magic the Gathering. There's no two ways about it. You, they have to continuously increase the power level. They can't just reprint the same kind of card. I mean, they saw. One big complaint I had was stop reprinting all these damn cards. Give us some new powerful cards. Give us some new powerful mechanics. I mean, they always give us new mechanics with these standard set. But give us something different. I don't want to see the same darn thing over and over again. I don't want to buy the next master set because you're just going to print the living shit out of it. Prices are going to tank. And my collector side is sad about that. Very, very sad about that. Um, because I, I like to I like to have something that's unique, you know, and special. And that's why I'm really excited that they did the whole serial numbered cards. And I knew that it was just a matter of time. I, I may have been the very first YouTuber who ever, uh, Magic Together YouTuber, who said anything about Hasbro, Watsy, eventually going to print serial numbered cards. I said, this is the future. This is where we're heading. I know me, me and Rudy, like, we, we similar mind mind states at, at times. I mean, he's on a different level when it comes to income and all that. Um, he, he's definitely an investor. And uh, I invest a little bit, but nothing on that level, you know. But Rudy said something similar as well. To, um, I mean, it was around the same time frame. It was like within like a two-month period. We're headed to serial number cards, you know. And, and that is so darn true. This was like two or three years ago. Maybe three years ago? I don't know when. I got to go back and find the video. But I remember, uh, and I think even before the video, where I, o I opened up an absolute memorabilia football hobby box. I pulled some, cool, some really cool cards out of there. Some, some notable players, man. Um, Kansas City Chiefs quarterback pulled that dude. Number to five game-worn patch. Sick. Really, really sick. I wonder if anyone can tell me his name. But that, um, that video I made just to show this is where we're headed. From this is like two, three years ago. I think it was 2021 Absolute or 2020 Absolute. So about two years, at least two years ago, maybe three. This is where we're headed. We're headed to serial numbered cards. You're not going to see any serial numbered cards um, in today's video. But there's quite a few. What, like 3,000 new serial numbers going into this or something? I don't, I don't know the exact number. Don't quote me on that one. But I, I think it's got to be more than that. 30,000? I don't know. A whole lot. You know how exciting it is to pull something special like that? The number to 500. I, I was talking about in the video, we got to see like rainbows, like how Chrome does it, you know, and whatnot. Uh, Topps Chrome. Uh, Topps Chrome even a thing anymore? I, know Bo I think Bowman Chrome still is. I think they got rid of Topps Chrome a while ago. Now they got like Prism. Prism's freaking nasty, though. All right, that's a whole, a whole other topic. We're focused, on, we're focused on this right here. But uh, I made that video because I... Uh, it was inevitable. It was inevitable. When I first got back in the game, I think it was 2017. And the only thing really that had changed was they did the expeditions. That was new to me. Oath of the Gate Watch. Um, was it Battle for Zendikar? That, that was like, that was different, you know? And I'm like, oh, wow, this is like a scarce card. And then I also... Came across Planeswalkers. Never seen a Planeswalker until I got back in the game 2017. And I'm like, wow, that's that's a unique concept. Okay, that's like a completely different card type, like, altogether. Wow. Like, I, I had no idea how they even functioned. Nothing, you know? But, you know, I, again, like, we all learn. So eventually I learned how it all goes. And uh, I thought that was neat. But then as I began opening... Pa uh, this is cool too. This is like the masterpieces, you know. They, they, what do they call it now? The Halifoil? Is that what we're calling it? No. It's gotta be there's gotta be a different name for that. But um where was I at? Now that uh 
now that I'm like back in the game and I'm, and I'm cracking packs, you know, mostly it was just dra- it was draft box then. I'm like, well, that hadn't really changed a whole lot. And bundles were a new thing too. And pre-release kits, those weren't around, you know. And I'm like, well, this is this is different. But after like a couple years of opening this, and the, the masterpieces came out with Kaladesh, and, and I thought that was a little neat sort of once in future. This card's gonna tank to like eight bucks. Bet me. Bet. Um, I thought. Without these like masterpiece cards and these chase cards, do you have any idea how boring it is to open up a draft box? And I, sp- I speak this as a player who that's who was in the game when there was nothing but draft boxes, you know. And they, well, you also had the the starter decks, you know, stuff like that. Um, that was it, you know. You didn't have these bundles. You, you just go to the store, you buy a couple draft packs, that's it, and you hope to get a cool card in the set, you know. Um, I, I was around when they transitioned into foils even, you know, when foils were a new thing. Holy crap, you know, like, wow, times have changed. And uh, I thought it was very interesting that they introduced the more scarce cards with, the you know, the masterpiece, the inventions, our devastation, all that stuff, you know, and I'm like, okay. They're onto something here, cause man, it is exciting to pull those cards. And I think the like tipping point where I'm like, all right, something's about to change, something big's about to happen here, you know, was when Hasbro came out and said, look, Watsi, we need you guys to double your sales in the next two years, you know, like the new guy, whatever. Um, I don't even know if it was a new guy, a CEO or whatever. He was told this, like, you know, or the production guy. Who I don't know how it all works. Step up your game, right? Uh, and then we started seeing secret layers and, and all these other crazy uh, c- c- commander sets shoved down our throat. Secret layers, which was like a once a month thing that turned into like almost like a two, three times a month thing, it seems. Just, just holy crap, you know? Um, it wouldn't be just one secret layer, like the kitty scratch one or whatever, or the feline, whatever they called it. Uh, it went from that into you're going to have seven secret layers in this huge bundle we're going to sell to you for 400 bucks. You know, like, I was like, wow. And then they started doing that like monthly. And I'm like, holy crap. You know, it's like all them super drops, you know? And it was like a super drop. It's supposed to be like a quarterly thing or, or twice a year. But man, they just went, they went crazy with it and just started praying the crap out of them. And then I'm like, all right. I'm not even I'm not even mad about that. I think that's cool too, you know. But then I was like, these secret layers are so boring. I remember saying all this, man. Like, I, it's like I I was like one step ahead, thinking where Watsi was headed. And I, I think a lot of that has to do with because I was big into sports cards. I was a collector before I was a player of any kind of card game. You know, like Magic was a new thing. I was collecting baseball, basketball cards back in the day. And um, what happened was. I saw the potential, you know, like with the secret layers. And I'm like, I'm sick of seeing these, uh, the stained glass planeswalkers. Like, they, they ran that for, what was it, like six months to a year where you can get this, like a secret inside the secret layer, which is like some random card. And that was, you know, the planeswalker cards, right? Stained glass, whatever. Pane glass, stained glass, I don't give a crap. And I was just thinking to myself, wow, they should really step it up and insert something else into here because this is getting really boring. And it was like within a six, like I said, that six months in advance. And then what do you know? They started uh, introducing like more like limited secret kind of pools and cards. I remember that one mill card or whatever. That was a big one. You know, I can't think of the name of it, but things just started changing, you know. And I, I talked about the, the serial numbered cards. And I said, this, this is where they have to go. If they want, I'm like, all you got to do, Watsy, or you know, Hasbro, whatever, if you want to increase the revenue, you want to increase the money, you want, you, want, you want to sell boxes, limit the cards, limit certain cards, make them special, make them unique, make them desirable, make them collectible like serial numbered cards and sports cards. You know, just put a stamp on it. You, you want to sell a, uh, a million boxes? I remember saying this one. I'm like, put a one-on-one on something. 
This is years ago. They finally got a one-on-one. It, it, it happened with the Lord of the Rings set. And I'm just like, wow, I'm like just mind blown, you know, by, by all that. Um, but, I, but I knew, I, I had a feeling it was inevitable. I didn't know. Nothing is certain in life, you know. But I, I had a feeling that that's, that's the route they had to take. Because what other route are they going to take in order to increase all this revenue? They saw secret layers. People were starting to fade away from that a little bit. And then they're like, all right, let's just push these damn serial numbered cards. And they did. And the first time that we saw a serial numbered card was, it, ironically, in a secret layer, you know, with uh, that backward text, uh, the black card or whatever. So, I mean, that, that was neat. And some people, um, not some people, but I think a lot of us, I don't think we're nervous about the serial numbered cards, but I think more so is, is what, what, what's going to come of all this, you know? Are, are we going to do the whole, all right, these 10 cards or these 20 or these 30, 40 cards are all going to be numbered as 500 in every single set. When are we going to see like like uh, some stabilization where we know what to expect in a set? Because, wow, things just continue to change nonstop, almost set to set. You know, that there's something different or unique. And I think, you know, the, the foil, you know, different kind of foils is cool, like the surge foil, you know, the etch foil and all that. Uh, I think the etch foil was the very first time they changed the foiling. Was it the etch foil? I think so. And then you got the complete foil and you got this foil and that foil and the rainbow foil and the double rainbow foil. Oh, it's a double rainbow. You know, like whatever. I have no no qualms with that. I have, I have nothing bad to say about that. And I, and I hope they continue to... to to, to push the envelope, you know, and like some other stuff, I said, hey, I should go back and just really like reopen these videos. You want to sell a bunch of cards, man. You want to sell a bunch of boxes. Yeah, make this stuff special. And and that's what they have done here. And, and like there's a lot of hype now because they, they, they made the, they saw the, here's what happened. They saw the potential with the reserve list, if you ask my opinion. So they're like, well, how can we bring back the reserve list? And they tried with M30. Epic fail. We all know that, you know. They, uh, how can we bring back the reserve list? And, 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 like, tap into that kind of money. Those big dollar cards. Well, what does the reserve list offer? Rare cards. They're basically serial numbered. Go to Alpha. 1,100 rares exist. Go to Beta. Was it 3,000 rares exist? That's basically serial numbered, you know? And I'm sure 5 to 10% of those cards are destroyed and forgotten about and lost or in the dump, you know? like So even less, really, when, if you want to break it down. But I think they, they saw the potential with the reserve list. And <laughs> they got kicked in the mouth when <laughs> they got kicked in the D. When they tried the BS with the M30. Um, it, Dave, Big Box Dave said, you know, it, it's, it's really not... Um, a proxy set, it's a commemorative set. And I got to agree with that, you know. I'm not happy with the price tag on it. That, honestly, that's the biggest issue everyone has. You want to call a spade a spade, M30? Everyone's got an issue with the price tag. It's, it's, it's out of this world. It's stupid. It's way too much money, you know. I, I've, I've covered this a billion times. But I think they saw the potential with reserve list cards. And what is reserve list? Scarce. Reserve list is scarce. And Watsy's like, all right, man, let's give them something scarce. And then we started seeing these different kind of foils. We started seeing the serial numbered cards. We started seeing the variants, you know, was it Throne of Eldraine, you know, or uh, whatever. We started seeing the collector boxes. I remember, oh, this is like a four year, this is from like four or five years ago video, like my first couple years in. I'm like, it would be so neat. I was cracking standard showdown packs. The ones you get if you go to your local game store and participate, you know, in events and whatnot, you win these, like, free packs. There's, like, four cards or three cards that come in it. You know, one's an uncommon. One, one could be a, uh, a rare or a mythic. Or two slots could be a rare or a mythic, you know. And uh, they give these out for free to players. And I'm like, man, wouldn't it be cool? Because I was so obsessed with opening those standard showdown packs. If you guys go back, we probably cracked a 1,000 of the pro – they're called promo packs now or foil promo packs. I've cracked over a 1,000 of these because I was so – excited because it was it was it was different you got this little promo stamp on the card you know and i'm like well, that's cool and you're we're skipping 
we're skipping all all the all the crap not even crap okay it's a game at the end of the day we want to play the darn game okay and so do i but we're we're like it, wouldn't it be neat if we could skip just the basic like draft style pack opening shove this was you can quote me on this one man give us a bunch of rares maybe some uncommons and mythics all in one pack skip the common crap you know just give us all the goods man like the standard showdown packs give us give us the fire and, and just jack up the price on it it was two years later they came out with collector boosters and i'm like ain't that crazy and it, re it really it, it's mind-blowing you know but I think they, they definitely were already in that direction. It's not like I said something and they're like, you know what, we're going to go wrong with this. But um, it's just, I, I'm very pleased with the direction Wizards is taking here. I was a collector with sports cards before I understood that there's trading cards out there where they have text on them that allows you to play a game. And not only play a game, but play a game with someone else, you know with these cards. You're not just looking at pictures of dudes all day on sports cards. So being a collector first, you know, and just making sure I take really good care of my cards, sleeve them, you know, back in the 90s, put them in a binder or put them in the hard plastic or whatever, you know, the screw downs and all that. I, I was a collector before anything. And then I became a player, you know, when Magic came around. I think Magic is the coolest game out there, man. It is, it, it, it's, it's not for... It's not for a dumb person. It's really not. If you want to really be good at this game, you you got to study up. you got to brush up on your knowledge of the game. There's so much going on. It's so complex. I think it's the most... I think it was... I think they got an award for the most complex game from, like, the gaming... Whatever, you know, or whatever it's called. The, the, the gaming history? I don't know what, the, what they're called. The gaming convention? I don't know what it is. Um... But, you know, whoever, like, gives grades or, you know, sizes up any kind of game that exists out there. Magic, is, I think they were given the number one spot for the most complex game that exists. Because, you know, I'm not going to break that all down for you, but I, I, it's just magic's awesome, man. There's just, it's a lot of fun. You can share it with family, friends. You can make new friends, you know, share it with your enemy. You know, just keep kicking the crap out of them. Don't really tell them how to play the game exactly. Just, you know, just give them the basics and then just run them over. <laughs> Have fun with it, you know. But, uh, yeah, um, I do want to focus on the top few cards here. I like the direction they're going. That's all I'm going to say. I, I think they're onto something, but I would like to see, like, in sets, um, and they can change it up now and then, but let's let's see a one-of-one of, one of every rare, a one-of-one, one, like, almost like sports cards, a one-of-one of, one of every mythic. I don't know if we have to go one-of-one one for uncommons and commons. That would be crazy. But, let, you know, like, let's let's see kind of a rainbow, but not the craziest rainbow. They're, they're off to a really good start, number one to 500. I think that's dope. But give us like a one on one, maybe uh, uh, the one on one, maybe then number to fifty, uh, and then number to five hundred, and then whatever else they want to do. I think that'd be really really cool, you know. Make the like, continue to make the game extremely playable and fun. Don't ever lose sight of that. But also. Keep us wanting to collect it and have something special and, and just get that magical feeling like, wow, look what I just opened. You know, like they just want to share it with people. Like, holy crap, you know, like check this card out. That is such a warm feeling and an exciting feeling to experience and to share with others. You know, when, when you crack something that is just different, that you know other people don't have, it's, it's really, really cool. You know, and, and you know that card's special, but it also makes you feel special knowing that you have that card, you know. It, it's, it's, it's a cool thing, man. All right, so let's take a look here. Uh, back to March of the Machines. Uh, here we got Magic the Gathering, uh, March, March of the Gathering, March of the Machines. Ren and Realm Breakers way up top. Uh, land you control, have tap, add one mana of any color. Plus one, up to one target land you control becomes 
Three three elemental creature with vigilance, hex proof, and haste. <laughs> the abilities are nuts on all these cards. So three drop. Okay, this card's gonna. This is gonna be a more desirable one, but you can already see the price is, is dropping. But he can't pay sixty bucks for this off rip. Maybe maybe for the foil version at some point. Get an emblem if you may play lands and cast permanent spells from your graveyard. <laughs> uh, it's fun, huh? It's fun. What we got here? We got Grim 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 Corpse Born. It's a Halo foil. <laughs> Kind of reminds me of hollow foil like poke your mommy. Uh, cool. Cool. Enters the battlefield tapped and doesn't untap during your untapped step. Sacrifice another creature, untap Grim Grin, and put a plus one plus one counter on it. Whenever Grim Grin attacks, destroy target. Creature defending player controls, then put a plus one plus one counter on it. Wow. Five drop, huh? <sighs> sack dicks. Get your sack dick ready. Wow, they brought this style back. Ah, the Gilded Foil look. That's another one we didn't talk about. Yeah, Gilded Foils are cool. Trox and Praetor's voice. We already know about this one, right? Flying Vigil. Yeah, this is like um, the Multiverse Legends or whatever. At the beginning of your end step, proliferate. Flying Vigilance, Death Touch, Life Link, every turn proliferate. That's sick, man. I love it. Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. We already know about him, about that treatment, though. Yarrick the Desecrated. Another cool one. Yeah, okay, that's from that other set. Wow, really? Yeah, this is good. <laughs> okay. I don't know the scarcity of the Halifoils. I haven't looked into the set too much. I like just being excited when I first crack open a box, you know. If you made this far in the video, uh, just give me a skadoosh in the comments. I appreciate it. And hit the like also. It means a lot, guys. Those likes go a long way. Um, but I don't know how scarce the, the Halo is, but... Yark the Desecrated Halo. Uh, I'd say this card plummets to like 15 bucks. One of the smoke clears. And then it'll start climbing back up again. Hey, you heard it here first. Eh, maybe 20 bucks. 15, 15, 20. It's a great, that's a great card. Probably 15 bucks. All right, and at the very top, you got Ragavan and Nimble Pill for the Halo foil. They gotta be scarce, right? I'd say this goes down to maybe you know what maybe I'm right I'm wrong about these halo foils, I, I think I'm wrong. Uh, I'd say like thirty bucks, twenty five bucks maybe, but on this, again, ain't no chance in hell it's staying around three nineteen. I'd say this goes down to it might it might chill around eighty ninety bucks. You might see this drop to eighty ninety bucks. I wouldn't doubt it. And then of course it'll start climbing again. You know. Like, like uh, all the good, amazing, scarce cards do. Uh, Atroxa Praetor's voice yet again. 151 bucks. Then again, you know, they could be. They could be. Uh, they, they could hold a really high price point. $85, 90 No, it might be too low. $85. <laughs> this might be, this might not drop below 150 All right. Anyway. This is just speculation, just guessing, but uh, this looks like a really cool set. Very, very powerful. Um, where it all ends up, <sighs> by 2060, what power level we're going to see? 8-8 eight, eight Tramplers with Hexproof and Reach. First Strike, 3-drop. Enters the battlefield, triggers on it. <laughs> Who, knows? Who knows, man, but... Uh, I like it. I love magic. I can't wait to see what else they do. I can't wait for the next set. It's, it's, the set's not even out yet. can't wait for the next one. But yeah, check out this week's videos because we're going to be cracking open a lot of these. And patrons, keep an eye out because I am going to be announcing um, mom uh, breaks and battles pretty soon here. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, I'm Joey Moss, Bad Boy Gaming. Skadoosh.